Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to this update webinar with Minera Alamos. Uh, my name is Jared McPherson. I'm the Vice President of Research here at Red Cloud, uh, and I have with me on the, on the on the webinar uh, Doug Ramshaw, President and uh, Director of Minera Alamos. The format of the webinar is as follows: uh, Doug's going to give us a brief overview of Minera Alamos and and what uh, some of the most recent milestones and what's ahead. And then we'll take questions live from uh, live from the audience as, as we always do. Um, just to get the exciting part out of the way first, we'll, uh, we'll take care of the disclosures. For Monero Alamos, there may be some forward-looking statements made on this on this webinar. I would direct your listeners to the cautionary note on page two of Monero Alamos's corporate presentation, located on the investor section of the company's corporate website. For Red Cloud Securities, please see the full disclaimer and disclosures on our most recent Monero Alamos note on our website. I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. And we note that this call does not take into account the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigation and seek their own professional advice before investment. Specific to Red Cloud disclosures from Nair Alamos, in the last 12 months, uh, Red Cloud has been retained under a service or advisory agreement by Monero. And our Red Cloud or a member of the Red Cloud team has a long position in Monero Alamos shares. So with that out of the way, just before I turn over to Doug, I want to highlight one thing. I think it, it's important. We last had uh, Doug on for, for an update in August, um, and that was just after uh, the permitting approval for Santana. Uh, and that, at that time, the next big step was uh, getting the financing in place to, to get into construction. Uh, obviously, th that's now happened and, uh, uh, and part, part of what we're going to talk about today. Um, just as a as a highlight, if you had bought Monero Alamos after that webinar, uh, stock would have been about fifteen cents. Uh, you'd be up seventy three percent as of yesterday's close. So, um, you know, and and I think that that says a lot about um, Monero Alamos and the, you know a company doing what they say they're going to do and executing, um, and then communicating those key milestones and that and that how they're getting to them uh, to shareholders. So I think you know the forum like this and having a company that delivers uh, delivers it, I think are are, are the key things. So. Now I'm going to turn it over to Doug to give us a brief overview of Monero Alamos, um, what uh, what the recent news means, and what we have to look forward to. Well, thanks for that, Derek, and uh, thanks everyone. I'm actually for bandwidth purposes. I'm going to turn the webcam off uh, until after the presentation. Um, I, first thing I'd like to say, and, and before we get into the presentation. Uh, I will run through it a little quicker today. Um, uh, for people new to the story, uh, the webinar that uh, Derek referenced that we did in August is available on our website in the events page. In fact, all our web uh, our conference presentations are there. Um, and it keeps us honest in terms of what we say because I think management teams need to be accountable for everything they say. And I'm, I am very proud of as a company, our team has delivered exactly what it said it was going to do. And I, hopefully that gives a lot of credibility when we talk about the next 12 months. Uh, the other thing I, I, I really want to say is, you know, and to Derek's point about the share price performance, uh, we, we love what we do uh, and we will love building a new gold mining company next year. But we can only do it with the support of the investment community, and 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 we we acknowledge that. And so, when I do see returns um, uh, in our in our performance, uh, it makes me very comfortable and happy that those people that have supported this uh, business endeavor are, are, are reaping the benefits of it. And I think we're really just getting going in that regard. So, uh, as Derek mentioned, I will make a few forward-looking statements today, um, but now I finally don't have to tiptoe around the, the funding package, uh, as we announced last Friday. Uh, our company is, is based around an operating team that has built three mines in the last 12 years. Uh, we're not building things because we have no other path for them they're not big enough to sell or whatever we we build stuff because we want to build stuff and we we actually think in an industry that's starved of capital having a business model that can sustain itself from operating cash flow from operations is is obviously a um a way of avoiding needing to to do that merry little dance every six months with the equity markets whether they're cooperative or not um, we are fortunate uh, in that we are backed by a Cisco Gold Royalties. Um, honestly, outside of companies benefiting from the likes of Mr. Eric Sprott, 
um, deployment of capital. You know, money is tight in this sector. We saw it just the other day with the pros postponed uh, IPO of uh, Triple Flag uh, Royalty and Streaming Company, citing market conditions. It's astonishing that given the fact we're, we're approaching $1,500 gold again, um, things are so tough. And I think that, again, helps us with our business model of building mines so that we we are less reliant on the capital markets. Um, Cisco is our largest shareholder, just under 13% uh, right now. And with the equity part of the financing package, we'll go to just under 19%. Um, they also augment our strong technical team with ad additional technical expertise. So there's definitely intangible benefits we get from the relationship with a Cisco. Um, we're happy operating in Mexico. Our team has operated down there for 12 years um, and, and, and so have no comfort, uh, no issues working down there. And in fact, the speed of which permitting takes place in Mexico is, is actually a benefit of, of it as a jurisdiction. So we have two 100% assets, which I will get into today. Um, a little bit about the capital structure. This does not reflect the 30 million shares that will be issued to a Cisco as part of the funding package. So our issued uh, share capital will, will just reach 400 million shares. Um, I joked before, if we were exploring Greenfield expiration, that's clearly a, a share structure that's not conducive. Um, as a, a gold, eminent gold producer, we're a market cap story and, and certainly the, the, the share capital has not been an impediment to, to growth in our valuation over the last six months. Um, we've been fortunate alongside Derek's coverage to attract, uh, analyst coverage from Cormark, Hayward and Roth. Um, you know, two, two analysts out of that list of four raised their targets on Monday as a result of the funding package and the others had kept theirs, uh, unchanged, but, uh, it was nice to see the positive reaction to the package. Uh, the last thing I'll say on this slide is a lot of the sector talks, uh, about, you know, where are the generalists investing in the mining business? I'm a believer that as a mining business, if we operate like a, a sector that those generalists would look to invest anywhere else, you know, and, and, and run a business accordingly, then we'll attract them. And, and certainly our business model has been fortunate to attract uh, roughly 17% of our shareholders are U.S. generalist investors. And I, I think we will be looking to add to them uh, over the coming years. They're, they're long term and they're supportive and we're speaking their language. Um, so. We have outperformed. We had a warrant overhang uh, at the beginning of the year. Legacy warrants, they disappeared. We now have basically no warrants outstanding, uh, three million in total. Uh, we've just, we will be completing our third successive financing that is straight share. And I think that shows the strength of a company when it can attract investors prepared to take a shape the straight share. Um, and with that warrant overhang gone, we were able to outperform uh, our peer group. Uh, developers, um, gold price in the GDXJ. Um, and, and I would expect that to continue as we still trade at a discount, uh, to NAV to, to that peer group. Uh, only Cal Everett's, um, this was actually from a couple of weeks ago, but, uh, so Continental will probably have passed us with their, uh, their takeover. Uh, and really only Cal Everett's Liberty Gold has outperformed us, uh, since June 1. Um, and of that list, we're one of the few there that are actually going to become gold producer next year. So I would expect our, our, our performance to continue as we move into a different sector of companies. Um, I won't focus too much on the team. I will mention that Darren Kernigan, our CEO, uh, Federico Alvarez, uh, and Miguel Cardona, uh, have been responsible in, in the case of one of the last mines that the company built. They, they designed it, they built it, they ran it, and they quadrupled the resources there. We had, and that was at the Castle Gold's, uh, El Castillo operation that was bought out by Argonaut in 2010. So we have a very strong team to de develop these assets. We have Two, we have an equity exposure to a third asset. We assigned the option on Las Reyes to another company earlier this year, Prime Mining, and we own 16% of them. We wanted to focus on our 100% owned projects, which were more advanced on the permitting front. We're operating in Northern Mexico. Uh, it's where we're comfortable. I will I always say I'll take my hat off to those companies operating in the south of the country. I believe... Um, 
uh, that we should only expose our, our company shareholders to places that we personally would be prepared to sit foot on the ground. And I've been through a lot of troubled areas in the world. And uh, uh, if I'm not prepared to, to go and operate down in southern Mexico, our shareholders shouldn't have exposure to it. Uh, so we're, we're operating in a lot of country, um, very pro mining jurisdictions in Sonora and Durango. And um, uh, both Santana has, has gone through his permitting process, but Tuna is, is coming to a, a close. So we'll get into the project related side of things. Um, Santana, and we were finally in the re release last week able to talk about the, the CapEx requirements there. It is a very low capital intensity project. It's roughly $10 million to build our initial heat leach uh, project there. We are bootstrapping things. So we are not trying to define all the answers in the ground. We, we have enough to get an operation up and running uh, that will be initially a 25 to 30,000 ounce a year operation. And we will expand that production profile as we expand the resource. And as I'll get into uh, these next few slides, you'll see that there's lots of upside to those resources. And, and, and I think we'll see the, the initial production rate at Santana grow quite rapidly as we expand. But we want to expand uh, deploying operating cash flow uh, into expanding the, the resource, not having to do expensive equity uh, raises uh, to fund drilling. Um, uh, and, you know, in terms of the project, uh, we're looking at roughly a six to eight month construction time that will commence just after Christmas. Um, and we're very comfortable with the, uh, the, metallurgical characteristics of the project because we've done basically a bulk mining test. We, we, we did a heat leach test of various crush sizes, uh, amounting to roughly 50,000 tons, covered about 1100, uh, ounces of gold at a recovered gold rate that's approaching 0.7 of a gram. So, you know, one to one and a half times the, the head grade of, uh, of a lot of heat leach in, in, uh, the Great Basin of the States. And with that kind of grade, it allows us to build these things out in a modular manner. Um, so, uh, and yeah, the, the, the package we announced last week, I'm very happy with the, obviously the response in the market to this news. It were, we had the permitting in place and that's when we did the last webinar. Um, and, you know, I always said, it's one thing to say you've you can build something for 10 million bucks, but at the same time, you need to show that you've got the capital to do that. Now we can. Uh, we announced a $14 million um, partial royalty, partial equity construction financing with a Cisco on Friday of last week. Um, and uh, and that, that will allow basically this company to transition from gold developer to gold producer uh, and then thereafter uh, grow uh, to hopefully something quite meaningful in the in the gold producer uh, universe. In terms of the geological model, and I think this is important from a perspective of, okay, you can start at 25 to 30,000 ounces a year, but can you grow it to something meaningfully? We think we can. Uh, the Santana project has a series of these breccia pipes on them. Only a couple have been extensively drilled. Uh, the Nicho zone and Nicho Norte, where roughly 18,000 of the 30,000 meters on the property have been deployed in the past by previous operators. Um, and, and that forms our initial kind of three to 400,000 ounce resource that we're basing this uh, initial mine plan off. But more importantly, we've identified six to eight of these pipes on the property to date. And we think that there'll be more in time. And we can see the potential for Santana to grow to a million to two million ounces, uh, which is what we look for in all our projects. We don't mind starting on 300,000 ounces if we can grow it out. Um, so the drilling that's ongoing right now and, and on the right there are some of the highlights from our drilling uh, last year where um, no one actually cared. I mean, not just for Monero, but I think for the sector at large, 2018 was a pretty rough year. Uh, we were coming out with some spectacular holes pretty much from surface. Um, and, and I think I'm very excited that the drilling we're doing right now, uh, we have a much bigger audience on the stock and, uh, I think we'll, we'll get a lot more, um, uh, uh, 
less headwinds for, for those kinds of exploration results moving forward. Uh, we had discovery holes on new pipes last year, which we're following up on right now. Um, and so most of the drilling we're completing at site right now is, is to define the outer limits of the, the starter pit. They were still open last year. Those were step out holes at Nicho we put out last year. But we're also going to put a few holes into each of these other pipes. Um, just to confirm that the volumetrics we see there at surface and confirm that the grays we're seeing at surface, which are very similar to the grays we see above the Nicho breccia pipe, um, do translate to grade uh, at depth through drilling. So um, we will have a flow of news next year, both on the construction side and exploration side. Fortuna would be our second project coming on stream. Um, I'll jump a little ahead to... Uh, to what the, this is um, again about a 300,000 ounce resource. It's a three and a half to four gram uh, gold open pit at about a six to one strip ratio. It does involve a mill. Um, about 50% of the gold is recovered by gravity. The other 50% reports to a kind of off spec copper con that's value is in the precious metals within it. Um, we already own the 2000 ton a day of mill. There is a nice story as to how we got that so cheaply. Um, and uh, I, I, I would say that it, it would be worth getting back to the, the August uh, webinar to, to review that story uh, just in the, in the interest of time today. But we already own the mill for this project. The permitting here is drawing to a close. We could have pushed probably for these permits sooner, but we wanted the last federal permits and the federal government in Mexico to focus on Santana. Um, so, uh, but I would expect early next year to see the, the permitting process wrapped up at Fortuna too. And that's kind of important because as we get Santana up and running in Q3 of next year, we'll be looking to make a construction decision at Fortuna towards the end of next year. It's about a 12 month build. So all being well, it would come on stream in 2021. Uh, or uh, at the end of 2021. And we want to be a multi-asset company. Reason being, like this project is still very low capex, sub, sub 30 million US for a 50,000 ounce a year operation. But obviously, we're going to need to take debt on for that. We don't mind taking debt on if we're, we already have an operation up and running. Um, and so, you know, realistically, with, with Santana forming kind of almost the equity contribution to that package, we feel like we can build Fortuna with limited additional equity dilution. We run things at a very prudent 1250 gold. Uh, we stress test at a thousand ounce uh, gold. And the reason we run at 1250 is if we're lucky enough to have a fifteen, sixteen hundred dollar gold market, we really want that 250 to 350 uh, extra dollars an ounce to be captured on the bottom line for our shareholders. So it's really important for our projects to be able to run even in the worst of gold markets. Um, also, if we were to run at higher prices, the, the, uh, the IRR on this project starts getting quite cartoonish. Um, like, uh, like Santana, again, if we don't mind starting on a modest resource, so long as there's both brownfields and greenfields expiration upside that can be, uh, uh, developed out of the cash flow from the operations. For La Fortuna is no exception. Um, no systematic expiration since 2008-9. Um, coincidentally, that last work was done by our team. We know this project intimately. We know the upside that exists on the project, and we'll look forward to expanding the resources with that knowledge uh, of, of the property. So what does this all mean in terms of where we're going to be going? Well, our goal um, was to, to basically over three years get to 150,000 ounces a year. And we felt that that was going to require Santana and La Fortuna and potentially a third asset to get us to that uh, steady state of production. Um, our understanding of Santana now, I, I think that if we are right about some of those regional targets, uh, and by regional, they're all within a couple of kilometers of each other, um, I think of series Santana expansions coupled with La Fortuna coming on can get us to that goal. Uh, we are still looking at additional assets and I think all they're going to do is, is allow us to, to have a growth profile that can exceed 150,000 ounces a year if we were to bring a third asset on. So, uh, we think this is very realistic from two projects. 
um, that can be basically uh, brought on one after the other over the coming uh, two years. Um, and, and, and when I mentioned earlier about our, our share price performance, um, you know, we still trade the trail, the developer comparables. Uh, and given that we're going to be moving into the producer comparables, I, I think that there's still plenty of upside for, for our company to continue to perform and outperform the sector as we, we're one of probably, I would think six or seven companies off the top of my head that, that are going to be new gold producers next year. So our timing could be perfect in terms of a cycle, but as I mentioned earlier, with our prudent use of a, a gold price for our modeling, we didn't need higher gold prices to make this, uh, this company work. We'll gladly take them. And I think that's why really, if we get into a great gold market, um, the gold producers or, you know, there's a reason why they always uh, lead the charge. And so it will be nice to, uh, to be in good company in that regard. Um, Derek mentioned earlier, and, and I, th I think I'm most proud of this slide out of all of them because I'm a big believer that, you know, business 101 should be doing what you say you're going to do. Um, and I, I've stood up on stages and laid out our plans, knowing full well I've got to go back to those audiences. And so as such, I, I think about every word that comes out of my mouth. And so back six months ago, we talked about everything that was going to happen over the rest of the year. And I'm very proud of our ability and our team's ability in Mexico on delivering on those goals. Um, because with that in hand, and when we look at the next 12 months, I would hope that we've built a credibility with the market that we actually can do what we say we're going to do based on the history of that, uh, that you know, over, over the last year and certainly the last six months. So Santana, with the Santana funding in place, um, we will start construction after Christmas. Uh, it's about a six to eight month build. And, and I think we'll see both operations and, and uh, potentially the first gold kind of Q3 2020. Um, in the meantime, we are doing some expiration right now. It's kind of the expiration that needs to be done in advance of production. Largely, our business model is to fund that out of uh, cash flow from operations. But this, we think, is essential for us planning the future growth of Santana. So we will be uh, uh, ongoing expiration results right through uh, next year. Um, and alongside La, La Fortuna's um, culmination of the permitting process and debt and negotiations, we're going to continue to look for uh, accretive opportunities to our production profile. Uh, we do not want to rest on our laurels with Santana and Fortuna alone. Uh, we want to build a new mid-sized gold company. Um, this is not a company that necessarily, unlike Castle Gold, wants to come to a takeover. I think there are lots of orphaned assets out there that fit our operating team mentality that are going to sit out there. That might be five to 700,000 ounces um, that doesn't move the needle for the big companies. Um, that have diminishing returns for the exploration co companies to try to grow them more with expensive equity, um, whereas our team can actually take advantage of those, come in, build a mine, and grow grow them uh, further out of cash flow, like we're doing with Santana, like we're doing with Fortuna. So, um, you know, that's that's largely the the update. Um, and then there was probably, as Derek and I said, a fuller update uh, in the in the August. Uh, uh, webinar, but I uh, appreciate uh, being able to run through it uh, uh, today once again. All right, thanks, uh, thanks, Doug. And I think that's a good a good overview. Um, I, maybe uh, just before we get into some of the questions, um, do you want to maybe mention? Obviously, the big catalyst earlier this week was the announcement of the financing package with the Cisco. Do you maybe want to just provide a, a couple of the details on the on the three pieces of that package? Yeah. Uh, it was a it was a, a partial equity package. Uh, Six million dollars of it was thirty million shares to us to go, um, which will probably actually close just after after Christmas uh, at twenty cents a share. Um, the other component of it was the life of mine royalty for Santana, which was five million dollars for a three percent life of mine royalty. It's very hard with our bootstrapped approach to. Uh, determine exactly how you can value that royalty. So 
I actually hope that that royalty will look very good on a Cisco in years to come because it will mean that our shareholders have benefited from su substantial increases in our production profile and our, our resource growth. And we've been able to achieve those using a Cisco's money to grow uh, the operation. Um, the, the other thing we did do, um, and that was really more for us uh, than a Cisco, was to have an optional royalty facility in place not one that we necessarily have to draw down, but when you're going to start, albeit a very modest CapEx build, you should make sure that you have all the financial runway that you need to achieve that, uh, uh, that build uh, as planned. And so the 3%, uh, sorry, the 3 million optional royalty, we could draw down in million dollar tranches. Um, every, for every tranche we draw down, it would add a temporary two thirds of a percent NSR uh, to the royalty burden, but just capped for a three year period. So it's a bit of a capped royalty kind of thing that would fall off after, after three years. Um, but in reality, we would always value other opportunities in the new year. Uh, and as we, if we got to a point where we felt like we needed to draw it down um, and, and uh, compare cost of capital over, over over drawing down that royalty so it was more for darren and i to make sure that we had the financial flexibility to make uh the aforementioned construction decision well it's always good to have that uh that completion facility uh rather than being desperate uh, towards the end of a build um yeah. in place before you start um Okay, so we got one question uh, from uh, one of your shareholders prior uh, prior to the webinar. So we'll start with that one um, while we get the other, compile the other questions. Um, the question was uh, talk about the quality of rock uh, at Santana that makes it amenable to, to heat bleaching, and then also uh, you know what have what have the trade off studies shown for for run of mine or versus uh, crushing, and then uh, obviously talk about the metallurgical testing that you've done that you know, sort of got you to the conclusion that what you're built to the plan that you're building to. Sure, um, you know, for us, MET is so important. It can be a Achilles heel for a lot of projects. Um, Darren Cunningham, the CEO, is a metallurgist. Uh, you know, we're very fortunate. We've got a 50,000 ton sample that we've done uh to base our met work off which is not just a series of bottle oil tests this is real mining in action and seeing real leach kinetics from different crush sizes so we did we did a coarse crush uh lift on that pad we did a fine crush in the agglomerated product which gave similar recoveries obviously increased leach kinetics uh from it but recoveries were really no different and we also did some run of mom um i think I think this operation will largely be run of mine, stroke, force crush, probably force crush. Um, and we're seeing about 85% recoveries in the oxide. Um, the, the crucial thing during uh, the due diligence of the transaction when we put two companies together to form in their animals was with the underlying sulfide component of these types leach as well. Well, the gold here at Santana and in these types is free gold, it's not encapsulated. So we might need to crush a little bit more on the on the sulfide part of the uh, the, the deposit in future years, um, but the recoveries themselves were good. They were plus, you know, we're probably looking at seventy percent recovery in the sulfide, eighty five percent in the oxide. So in our modeling, we just blend those out at around seventy five percent, and like to err on the side of. Of a, of a conservative estimate in that regard. So um, I think that covered uh, the gentleman's question. Perfect. Yeah, I think it does. Um, the next question comes from the uh, comes from the, the chat. Um, talking a little bit, sticking sticking to Santana and perhaps talking a little bit about the expiration uh, potential. Um, of the six to eight pipes you guys have identified, uh, sort of the, the larger ones, the six to 700 meters in diameter, which is the one that you're most excited about putting uh, putting some holes in? Um, I'd have to say Zada because we can see it right across from where our camp is down there. Um, uh, it would be very easy to get holes in it. Um, it's, it's 
probably one of the closer ones to if we were to see a series of these pipes come into play, we probably put a centralized leach pad facility in away from where we're, we're developing the pads for the initial mining at Nicho and Nicho Norte. Um, Zadar is just sticks out it is like a sore thumb, but the new Gold Ridge uh, target has some real scale to it. And there's a couple of other pipes out there that have some real scale to them. Um, I'm, I'm intrigued for all of them, uh, to be honest. Uh, and, and it's why we want to put two or three holes into each, because what we're seeing at surface is very indicative of what we're seeing at Nicho. But I mean, just given how close it is to our camp, um, yeah, the Zada hole, Zada sampling we did last year, um, that one certainly lends itself to, uh, to very rapid testing. Yeah, I, I guess the, the opportunity is that you're, uh, the, the, the the supposed third asset, instead of being, uh, instead of having to go out and acquire something, is, is just the ex could be the expansion at, at Santana with some exploration success, right? Um, yeah, yeah, and we'll prioritize based on those first few holes. We'll prioritize prioritize which ones we'll do definition drilling so that we can speak to the market from a point of view that Santana can scale. And then um, maybe stepping back, uh, next question from the line, stepping back on a higher level on Mexico, obviously. Uh, um, Politics there have uh, uh, at least the uh, the discussion has, hasn't been uh, favorable for mining, um, and then also uh, I believe the the exact question is uh, discuss dubious Mexican politics, AMLO, sticky fingered bureaucrats, and safety. So <laughs> wow, yeah, there's, a, there's a lot to uh, unpack there. Um, okay, I mean from a point of view of Mexico. Uh, we are seeing things move now after the transition in the government. It did slow down our permitting a little. I think the former government, if this hadn't been an election year, we could probably have got things permitted in 10 to 12 months. As it was, even in an election year with 14. Um, the Sonora is a mining uh, heavy state and the governor there, a lady that's very supportive of mining, uh, understands that there's a lot of operations that kind of came into production at the tail end of the last cycle uh, that are coming, drawing to a close in terms of their uh, production profiles. And um, so it's not just us, we saw with Silvercrest as well get their um, environmental permits in place, even though their development is uh, behind ours. And I think they're just going to keep drilling some fantastic silver holes down there. We're going to go into to mining with our permit, but um, things are moving. Um, we have seen certain headlines that um, uh, would suggest the cost of labor is going to go up there. I think that's more akin to more of a problem for big unionized workforces. And we've seen some big wage settlements on, on those. Um, certainly, uh, government members there have a bit of a bone to pick with Grupo Mexico, but what it uh, but what it leads to is a lot of kind of clickbait headlines. We we see no change in how we operate down there. Our team is largely Mexican nationals. Even Darren now has his permanent residency because as the CEO of this company, it's one of the reasons we split our roles. He best serves our shareholders as the mine builder being down in Mexico, so that's where he is right now and has been for the last month. Um, so, uh, I'm not going to, uh, speak to sticky fingers because, you know, I've had no experience of that. Um, I'm not discounting the fact that there are companies that have, uh, uh, gone down that route with politicians and the like in Mexico, but, uh, we have certain responsibilities and, uh, certain re reporting requirements that's not uh, going down those those paths. So, uh, so Mexico, AMLO, um, oh, security. Um, you know, even in a good part of uh, Mexico like we are, Sonora, and a good part of Sonora like we are, you still have to take a prudent approach and you still have to understand what you're dealing with. When, you know, and this goes kind of back to our, our capex. Uh, one of the reasons we our capex is so low is we're not building an ADR at site. We're not producing Dore in Mexico. We're shipping loaded carbon just like they did at Castle Gold, just like Argonaut did at Castle Gold after buying uh, the company. We're shipping that to Metals Re Research in Idaho. So uh, we save all that upfront capital and and. The reality is if you were producing Dory at site, you'd have to increase your security costs 
uh, notwithstanding. Uh, uh, and so by shipping the loaded carbon, there's a process there. It's a far more benign product to be moving. Um, you know, it, it allows us to reduce our security issues. Um, but we're still very prudent of, of taking all the necessary steps, but we, we probably have to take a lot less steps than companies that actually are producing Dore at site. Um, so we're, we're fortunate in that regard. Right. Um, so just uh, looking ahead, I guess, uh, now that you're in the construction phase, and obviously Darren's, uh, Darren being a site means he, that he's been busy. Um, maybe uh, could you maybe talk to us a little bit about, obviously prior to the financing, there was a limit to what you could be doing at Santana to, to advance it. Can you maybe talk about a little bit about the construction work that's been undertaken to date? Um, yeah. 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 Um, we, uh, we have, I mean, we haven't, I guess, formally started main mine construction at this point, but we have been constructing. The first thing we did uh, was, uh, we've, we've just, I think, the, the earthworks and the area around where our explosives bunkers have been constructed. Um, it seems like a small part of construction, and it is relative to the leach pads and, and our plant. Um, but it's another way of, sh in, in my mind, of showing our experience of being down in Mexico. The reason we started with the explosives bunkers is all the permits we have in hand right now allow us to basically construct the mine. What they don't allow you to do is, is start mining. There's a couple of minor permits like water and explosives you get during that construction phase. Now our team with their experience down there have understood that you can shave three or four months off the process of getting your explosives permit by not sending your blueprints to the army and the, the local mayor and the, the, the two people that need to sign off on them, you know, have them come out to site, show them where you're gonna build, you know, then build, then bring them out to site, show them what you've built. We just go ahead, we build them to code. We bring the army in, they can sign off on that construction, you know, seeing and measuring everything that's, that's gotta be done in very specific manners. Like your explosives have to be a certain distance from your um, uh, detonator caps, for example. Um, and so, yeah, we have started minor construction work, but most of it will start in earnest uh, after Christmas in early January. And then looking ahead to that construction work, um, what are some of the, during the construction phase, what are what are some of the key milestones from Santana that, that investors can look forward to? They can say, oh yeah, um, Monero's on track for that Q3 uh, production start. Um, I mean, we're, in, in terms of specifics, it's, um, uh, you know, there'll be times where the plant plant area itself has been completed, the pads themselves. We're, we're not talking about some, uh, it's the beauty of heat leaches, it's pads, it's palms, and it's a plant. And, and you're, uh, you know, we're using contract mining, contract crushing. So we have a lot of very specific things. Like it's not like we're reporting, bringing in all the crushing equipment and bringing in your mine fleet and bringing in all these other aspects of a larger operation. So. I think that the six months or six or eight months will fly by pretty quickly. That being said, you know, from a company, they might not be the most interesting press releases, but I would like to be able to have, you know, every six to eight weeks, a nice construction update that will provide some color to, to the market that things are on track. I mean, guidance, once we become a gold producer, guidance is what you can live and die on uh, when it comes to guidance on your production. So I, I want to make sure that our guidance on construction timelines, you know, has as well rehearsed for when we're giving guidance on, on our gold production uh, uh, ideas. And then I guess, uh, what are some of the items that are, uh, other than the explosive bunker, that, which you just mentioned, what are some of the other, other items that are on the critical path for you guys that, you know, as investors can say, okay, yeah, they got that done, that's, that's important, or that piece of equipment arrived at site? Yeah, I mean, the, the, if we have to employ crushing, often our mine contractor, and I think we've been just completing the process of choosing a mine contractor down there, um, you know, that, that will be something that when we do that, we'll make that announcement. You know, they often supply contract crushing as well. So, um, you know, in reality, we are looking at only a few major items here. And, and I think the biggest one is making sure that the, uh, the leach pad 
is is obviously um, constructed. That's that's the largest amount of earthworks that's required uh, in in preparing the ground and constructing in constructing the leach pad. Our plants itself and the the necessary ponds aren't uh, aren't, aren't too onerous. So um, I, all of those will be reflected in updates next year to to give comfort that we're moving uh, in 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 a fashion in line with our guidance. So I mean. Maybe taking a step back and looking at the, the larger company, besides sort of the construction updates that we're going to get, uh, as you said, every six to eight weeks or so, um, what other catalysts should uh, should investors be looking forward to um, from uh, from Monero? Yeah, I, I, after going through a year where it felt like most of our news was uh, permitting news, which is very obviously very important for a future gold producer, but probably a bit of a yawn fest for the market, um, I'm happy to say that we're not going to have that same flow of construction news, you know, uh, next year alone. We're going to have expiration running alongside it. So uh, I would expect to have routine expiration drill result press releases um, through the first six months of next year running in parallel with the um, equally important construction updates of the company. So um, and as far as Santana, there will be a very nice blend of of expiration updates along with the construction. And in, in many ways, I kind of joke with, with friends that uh, what I like is that Monero can kind of offer itself up as like a mini ETF of you get production, you get development, and you get expiration, but all of which can be meaningful to our overall valuation. Um, you know, if you're a big mid-tier gold producer and you come out with some expiration results, it, you know, very, very rarely, unless it's something special, that are they meaningful to the valuation of that company? I think we're still in a at a, a valuation range where we can we can surprise on the expiration side. Um, the nice thing is none of what we're doing on the production side is reliant on expiration success. The expiration success will uh, drive future valuations that I think can uh, be supported without us needing to do additional acquisitions, but um, uh, we don't live or die on expiration results. All right, I think that's a, uh, I think that's a good spot here to, to, to wrap it up on, on, that, uh, on that note. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for attending and thank you, Doug, again, for taking the time to, uh, to be on the webinar. We appreciate that. Um, and I, you know, just as uh, for those on the line, if you want look want more information, feel free to, to go to Mayor, Al Mayor Almos's website to uh, to learn more about their projects, or go to our uh, our research page uh, for Monero Alamos, and there's more uh, there's more additional information there, and it's why we like the stock and uh, why we think it uh, still has uh, more room to run. So, at that, thank you very much, and we'll uh, and we'll see you all next time. Thank you.